Hello and welcome to another Rider Pilates session. We're working your whole body today. Sometimes it's just really useful not to get too specific on any one area and just work the whole body in the way that we would be using it in the saddle. Apologies once again for the wind. I swear I'm doomed on the days when I want to film for for YouTube, but there we are. Um, riding horses, the weather's rarely perfect, so sometimes we just have to get on with it. So let's get started thinking about the symmetry of your body before you start really working. I'm sitting cross-legged, you can sit frog's legs if you'd rather, that's absolutely fine, or sit on a block if that opens up your hips and makes them more comfortable. Make sure, however you are sat, you've got equal weight through your seat bones and your shoulders are level. Relax those shoulders, arms across your chest, and then you're turning side to side, keeping your shoulders level and keeping equal weight through your seat bones as you turn. Then face the front, put one hand onto the floor beside you and take your other arm over your head and into a nice stretch down your side. If you want to make it a little bit harder, a little bit bigger stretch, you can put your hand a bit further away and then go down more, almost onto your elbow, but try to keep your seat bones on the floor, not just lift off. Okay, then we'll do the same the other way. So hand over, gentle stretch the first time. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, just go a little bit further, see if you can drop that elbow towards the mat. And then back up. Okay, we're going to go onto your back. And we're going to start with your oblique front exercise. So feet and knees approximately hip width apart. Find where your tummy feels most comfortable in a neutral position. We'll start with your left hand at the top of your neck, the base of your head. Float your right fingers, reach for your right toes and bring left shoulder towards your right knee and take everything down together. So float and reach into that turn and everything back down together. Watch that you don't imprint, so we're avoiding this position. Really working through your upper and to your back. Be careful not to pull with your left hand, so fingers around your ear if you find that you are starting to pull. to doing your scissors exercise so make sure that your feet are far enough away from you to be able to move from the hip think ribs to pelvis hands onto your headlights that gives you a little bit of feedback about where your pelvis is and then one leg into tabletop and down and the other leg into tabletop and down make sure you're moving from the hip all the way up and all the way down if you're finding this easy you can of course do the reverse starting in tabletop and lowering each leg but then it becomes even more important that you move from the hip and don't just bend your knees from this position your rib position is absolutely crucial so that as your leg moves away you don't find yourself creeping upwards through your ribs remember to breathe as well so watch you're not holding your breath now it floors staying on to floor three Okay, bring your feet down and we're going to move on to your hip twist. So same starting position, if you're going from the floor, you are rolling each leg out in turn. Keeping the other leg as still as you possibly can. If you want to go from your tabletop position, then it's the whole leg that is on the go. Whichever one you're doing, remember the leg that is staying still, Stay still enough to have that imaginary glass of wine runs on it. And again, rib position is going to really help to anchor your body, keep it stable. So you've got a nice solid point to move from as you do the hip exercise. Okay, let's bring your feet down because we're now going to combine those two exercises. So you're going to go from the floor version, one leg up, do the 
scissors one leg out for your hip twist and then the other way and then if you want to go from tabletop then you've got one leg coming down for scissors as one leg goes out for hip twist up and then the same thing the other way so you can really choose which one you feel like doing today always ribs towards your pelvis Remember to keep breathing, and if you can, pelvic floor onto floor three. Okay, one last one each way. Feet onto the floor, and we're going to move onto your shoulder bridge. So, feet a bit closer to your bottom. If you've been using a headrest, slide it out of the way. Pelvic floor onto floor three, then you're increasing your low back and feel up. Make sure at the top, you're basically a straight line from shoulders, hips to knees. Watch that you have an overarched. Make sure you can breathe as well. And then come back down through your imprint. So imprint and heel up. Relax breathing at the top. Coming back down through that imprint to finish. Do one more just like that. So really working on every single vertebra. Moving individually all the way up and then individually all the way back down. Under control and flowing. Then we're going to take your hands up above your shoulders, keep them in that position and let's see if you can do that same controlled movement through the whole of your spine and your pelvis. So we've taken away some of the support, a bit like when you suddenly ride, do, do your trot work without stirrups. You've taken away your support because your arms are no longer on the floor. So can you still do the movement under control? But also, perhaps more importantly, or certainly as importantly, do your hands stay still above your shoulders? Does that position, that distance between them, stay the same the whole way throughout? Or do you find that one hand starting to drift? They're getting close, they're getting wide. So yes, this is a control exercise for your spine. It's also a stability exercise for your hands, for your contact. And it's no good if you're in the saddle and you can move your back, but as soon as you start moving through your back, your hands start to move as well. They want, yes, they need to move with the horse, obviously, but they want to remain equal and balanced. Okay, last one. Okay, bring your arms down and we're going to turn onto your side and we're going to start with your side kick. So you can do this um, flat on your side if you want to. I will show you this version so that if you want to do the slightly harder one then you can, but it's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter whether you are flat or slightly propped up, straight line from shoulders, hips to knees and your knees are in that capital L position. Hands onto your top headlight, pelvic floor onto floor three, float your top leg and you're doing that lovely imaginary coffee table polishing. And I was taught this analogy when I first started learning about Pilates, and I still think it's the best one, because there aren't that many things in life that involve you having your leg in this position. I mean, to be fair, we don't polish the coffee table with our leg, do we? But there aren't that many objects in daily life that are about this height that might potentially require you to move your leg like this. So I think polishing the coffee table is still probably the best analogy you can think of to help you keep your hip, knee and foot level. So we are watching that your knee doesn't drop, that your foot doesn't drop when your knee lift. It's about, again, always comes back to that precision of position and control. So all the movements from your hip, the leg stays level. If you're finding this version getting a little bit tiring, then drop back and do the version just lying flat on your side. So it's entirely up to you, do what is best for your body. One more. Okay, bring that leg down then onto your front. I'm going to do your swan dive. So we'll start with the level one version and if you find that easy you can do the level two as well. Arms out to the side, elbows to 90 degrees, tummy slightly away from that imaginary puddle of water and you're lifting through your head and neck. Stay looking down. If you're doing this you're just blocking through your neck.
if you're finding that easy, then you can add in your uh, arms as well. So keep that movement quite small still. If you sink through your tummy, you'll go further, but you're just arching through your low back. So keep it small. Remember to breathe. Check in with your tummy position. Make sure that's just staying away from the of water. Okay, let's pop onto the side you haven't already been on and we're going to go back into your side hip. So again, if you want to go flat, that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, drop back onto your forearm like me. Legs once again into your capital L position. Top hand onto your top headlight, pelvic floor out the body, float your top leg, and again, you're back into that coffee table polishing. Moving from the hip, use that top hand, make sure that you're not rocking through your pelvis. And yes, in the horse, we do need to be able to move through the pelvis, of course. And I suppose we could turn it to an exercise where you practice doing that, but you need to be able to separate out what your hip and pelvis are doing so they don't just always move as one unit. The hip has a separate role to the pelvis, the pelvis moves with the horse, the hip is what's then going to be able to help you provide your leg aids. They've got to be able to work separately as well as together. So having this sort of precision of control placement is really crucial. Okay, I think we will do one more. Leg down and then we're going to come up into sitting and I'm going to go slightly diagonally because then you get a good view of from different angles and we're going to do your oblique roll up. If you want to pause this and get a cushion to sit on, by all means do. Knees gently together so they're not clinging on together for dear life but do I try and keep them there gently. Hands up in front of you sort of as if you're holding your weight. Your knees are probably a little bit in the way. Relax your shoulders. I see a lot of people doing this like this. Relax shoulders and then you are rocking backwards and forwards through your low back and pelvis. Again, as if you are moving with the horse. Keep those hands soft. Try to keep those knees together, mine were just creeping apart. And we're keeping that movement small because on the horse you don't generally find yourself doing this. So it's a little relaxed, small movement through your low back. Hands are staying soft, shoulders relaxed. So again, you can separate out the bit of your body that's moving is your low back and pelvis. The rest of you, soft and relaxed, not doing anything particular. Okay, bring your hands down. We're going to go onto your hands and knees. And we're going to have a go at your swimming. So if you can have your hands under your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. We'll start off just by bringing the arms in, then we'll add in the legs as well. So first of all, each arm out in front in turn, making sure you can keep your back nice and still. If that's easy, give the arms a rest and we'll go into your legs. Aiming to get your legs basically horizontal, so try not to head for here, you're heading for about here. And try to go for that slide and lift rather than lift. If that's getting easy, which I'm sure it probably is, let's add in your arms back in so you're doing both together. It's diagonal opposites. You could try and do the same side, but it's a bit awkward. So diagonal arms and legs, slide and lift again, hoping for that nice horizontal position. Then see if you can get to the side. So arms and legs going to the side. Opposite arms and legs going in opposite directions. Try to get your weight as balanced in the middle as you possibly can. Okay, let's change it. Now see if you can do it on the diagonal. So still opposite arms and legs going in opposite directions. One more each 
which way. Okay, then bring your hands to your knees and if you can, have your bottom just sitting back onto your knees, onto your heels even. That'd be tricky, bottom onto your knees. And then if your back is comfortable, slide your hands forwards. Let your head rest down as low as it is comfortable. And a couple of nice deep breaths. your knees and back into sitting and we are going to finish there so I hope you've found some of those exercises useful interesting highlighting a few differences in your strength and your control and your positional awareness all those things are good don't worry if that is the case it just means that's what you need to work a bit harder on thank you so much for watching um, look after yourselves and I will see you on the next session bye bye